Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous evening here in the end times in paradise at Bugs in a Jar Farm here in the end times. That would be Monday. Monday, June 13th, 2020. Good God, guys. Alright, I'm going to keep my monkey pox roundup rant very short because I'm just going to use... We're just going to touch on two stories and use it kind of a, in a segue and into something that I've been wanting to talk about all day anyway. But uh, I can use this monkeypox uh, crap on the mainstream media uh, somewhat in a lead-in. So guys, I don't know when you when I go into these two stories. Uh, I don't know, is it because heterosexuality is my number one personality trait, uh, <laughs> according to one of these psychological tests, heterosexuality my number one personality trait, uh, or the fact that my gay brother died of AIDS that uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just sick and tired of this crap in, in the mainstream media. But if you sit here and read the mainstream media, uh, I, I guess you're a homophobe. So uh, I'm sure there will be people calling this uh, heterosexual a homophobe. Number two biggest story on the planet right now in the mainstream media from the Washington Post. Monkeypox dilemma. Monkeypox dilemma. How to warn gay men about the risk without fueling hate. Yes. How do you say monkeypox is a gay male disease without being labeled a homophobe. Okay, this is the same thing as if you are particularly a white person, particularly a southern white male with a southern accent, and you point out the fact that sub-Saharan Africa has succeeded its carrying capacity and the reason that Sub-Saharan Africa is getting ready to starve to death is not Vladimir Putin's fault. Okay? I hate to tell you, not Vlad's fault. He gets the pass. It's, it's the people having the kids. Alright? So you are a racist. You are a eugenicist by saying that. And I guess you're a homophobe by reading the Washington Post. We're going to start out in Salt Lake City, Utah. Strange place to start out in monkeypox. Right? Monkeypox had arrived in Salt Lake County with two men testing positive after returning from Europe, the epicenter of a global outbreak concentrated in gay and bisexual men. Officials in the Utah County faced a dilemma. They wanted to warn men who have sex with men that they were at higher risk for exposure to the virus, but they feared unintended consequences Number one being heterosexuals assuming they are not susceptible to the monkeypox. Okay, then they have some more reasons. You don't want to you, you don't want to hurt their feelings. We can't have any hurt feelings anyway. But uh, we're going to talk about the first one: the unintended consequence of heterosexuals assuming they are not susceptible. Yes. Okay, it's, and it's not just Utah. 
officials who are struggling to fight to find the right message as the United States confronts its largest ever monkey out monkey box outbreak with nearly 50 with nearly 50 probable cases we have to make a quick detour over to percentage calculator 50 is what percent of 334 million that would be 0.0, .0 zero 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 one four nine seven percent my guess men who have sex with men uh, anyway we're not gonna go 50 is what percent of 50 okay because actually we don't have the uh, the sexual orientation of 50 people. Okay. <clears throat> With nearly 50 probable cases, public health authorities navigate a delicate but familiar balancing act. In the 17 U.S. cases, in which the sexual behavior of the patient is known. How many involve men who have sex with men? If your answer was 16 of the 17, give yourself a gold star. And my guess is the 17th uh, was some lion sack of shit who did not want to admit he stuck his dick up another dude's butt. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little uh, unclear. Has a, has a single... F has one single female on planet Earth ever gotten monkeypox? I mean, I honestly don't know. You notice that in the 17 cases... All but one involve men who have sex with men, mirroring trends uh, in Europe. And it is something never recognized before in outbreaks of the virus. So you know where it's been endemic over there in sub-Saharan Africa for decades. Uh, it's, uh, you know, this is, gee... And uh, so they go on and on. Uh, here we go. This is Nicholas Rupp from the uh, Salt Lake County Health Department. Quote, we don't need to put rainbows all over and make clear it's only for men who have sex with men. Because it's not. The virus does not see sexual orientation. Hmm, one more time. In the 17 U.S. cases in which the sexual behavior of the patient is known, all but one involve men who have sex with men mirroring trends in Europe. All right, here is, looking up in New York, I guess, they want to avoid creating the false impression that monkeypox is a gay disease. <clears throat> in the 17 U.S. cases in which the sexual behavior of the patient is known all but one involve men who have sex with men mirroring trends in Europe and I think you get the drift so let's go over to uh, to Europe so right next to that one uh, we have this one well I guess this is the UK uh, 
in particular. Okay, next to that story, UK reports 104 more cases of monkeypox, mostly in men. It does not say gay men. It just says men. All right. British Health Division detected another 104 cases of monkeypox in England, blah, blah. Okay. <clears throat> the UK's Health Security Agency said on Monday, today, that there were now 470 cases of monkeypox across the country. I don't know the UK's population, so I can't run over to percentage calculator. 470 cases of monkeypox across the country with the vast majority in gay or bisexual men. According to UK data, what percent of cases so far have been in men? If your answer was 99%. 99% of the 470 cases are in men. I don't know whether they're saying that there's 4.7 women uh, in the UK with monkeypox. Uh, obviously, they are not going to give the sexual orientation of that statistic. 99% of the cases so far have been in men. Um, a leading advisor to the World Health Organization said the monkeypox outbreak in Europe was likely spread by sex at two recent raves in Spain and Belgium. Not one death from monkeypox has been reported outside of Africa. There you go. Uh, Anyway, guys, so I, I'm just going to wrap up the monkey pox portion of this. But anyway, okay. I don't know. I'm just an average guy. Just an average guy. You know, I, I hear, or I did hear at one point, I, I had a 148 IQ. Five years of college, of journalism training, seven years uh, working kind of on the borderline between the mainstream and the uh, alternative media, kind of in that gray area. And it sounds to me like this is a gay male disease. I, I have done my research, and the, the, the goddamn mainstream media can tell me till they're blue in the fucking face that this is not a, a gay man's disease. 99% in, in, uh, in the UK, 16 of the 17, and as I say, I have my doubts about that 17th dude. Uh, but guys, it's just, uh, th this is kind of a, a, a lurching segue in, into the story that I've been wanting to talk about today. And this is not about the M word, it's about the C word, and I... If I told the story, uh, I would have this video pulled down for medical misinformation and might have my channel ripped down, so I can't even tell the story. Uh, I can't give all the details, but I received two emails uh, in the past 24 hours from two of my close friends who are... Uh, 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 disagree a little bit uh, on the uh, on the corona panic and 
on, on both of them from uh, they were about different aspects of it but uh, both of them with a little bit of research they you, 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 with research checking your facts just doing some basic research uh, I mean how can I delicately put this that these people you know putting out these damn and I'm talking on both sides okay I'm talking to everybody, you know, from the bullshit mainstream media right up to the conspiracy wackos. They, they take these things uh, that they know nothing about, and, uh, and so you have the people following the mainstream media story uh, just getting one angle of the story. And so since they're not exposed and they, you know, to any other angle than what the fucking mainstream media, you, you know, gatekeepers lets through, uh, you know, if, if you think you've done your research. And so anyway, then on the flip side, and I say, I, these are two of my good friends. So how do I, I, I delicately say this in a way that will not get, I have to talk in code so I don't get this video pulled down. Uh, so anyway, my friend, this is not exactly what happened, but they said that there has been an increase in chipmunk mortality at Bugs in a Jar Farm since Sancho Panza moved in. Okay. That, uh... No, wait, wait a minute. No, no, wouldn't be that. No. Okay. What they, the, the, the story was about this mysterious, this mysterious uh, fact that chipmunks are showing up dead at Bugs in a Jar Farm. That's the story. We have chipmunks showing up dead at Bugs in a Jar Farm and trying to figure out why chipmunks are dropping dead at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, there is the fact that Sancho Panza moved to Bugs in a Jar Farm, let's call it two years ago. So something happened in the chipmunk, a, a perturbation in the chipmunk population at Bugs in a, in a Jar Farm. Something happened about two years ago. The only thing that, that that we can think of, and Chip, and that was that Sancho Panza moved to Bugs in a Jar Farm. So obviously, chipmunks are dropping dead at Bugs in a the, this mysterious chipmunks falling, you know, being found dead, sudden. What's it called? Sudden Chipmunk Death Syndrome. S-C-D-S. Sudden Chipmunk Death Syndrome. Where a chipmunk is running around, being a chipmunk, and the next second, the chipmunk is dead. And Sancho Panza arrived on the scene about two years ago. So, conclusion, the chipmunks at Bugs in a Jar Farm are showing up dead, healthy adult chipmunks showing up dead is due to the fact that Sancho Panza moved to Bugs in a Jar Farm. Open and shut case, obviously. And as I told my buddy, and I hope I didn't uh, offend, uh, offend you, brother, uh, I, I wrote him back, you know, let him know that this is an interesting point 
but it never said anywhere uh, in the in, in the video how many chipmunks were falling over dead before Sancho Panza moved there. I said if if, uh, if I were a journalist getting paid to figure out the great mystery of sudden chipmunk death syndrome, uh, particularly in the past two years since a certain perturbation was introduced to the chipmunk population, the first question I would have, the first question was how many fucking chipmunks were dropping uh, dead at Bugs in a Jar Farm three years ago before Sancho Panza got here. Okay? That nowhere mentioned uh, in, in, in the video that he sent and, you know, the guy in the video just picking up uh, and, 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 and just like barely even reading the headline of, uh, of an article that he was waving around. Fortunately, I found the article he was waving around, and it in no way, uh, in no way uh, defended his argument that there were any more chipmunks dying at, at Bugs in a Jar Farm uh, in, in 2022 than there were in 2020, despite the fact that Sancho Panza moved in there. That had nothing, nothing to do with, with the article, but of course they were trying to make people who have the preconceived notion about Sancho Panza causing sudden chipmunk death syndrome, that you were to automatically, anybody watching that video would, would walk away from the video obviously believing that a shitload more chipmunks are falling over dead uh, since Sancho Panza moved to Bugs in a Jar Farm two years ago than were falling over dead three years ago or four years ago or five years ago. So I put in, I googled, uh, you know, incidents of sudden chipmunk death syndrome. I googled sudden chipmunk death syndrome and it took me about 45 fucking seconds to find an article which was written, I have to admit guys, unfortunately the article uh, that took me 45 seconds of research was written before Sancho Panza, just before Sancho Panza moved two bugs in a jar farm, but what the article said, I mean, up until right about the time that Sancho Panza moved to bugs in a jar farm, that actually the incidence of sudden chipmunk death syndrome had declined, I think, 15 to 19 percent since the 1980s depending on how you define your term sudden chipmunk death syndrome. Uh, 15 to 19 percent. It's not like chipmunks were never dying at Bugs in a Jar Farm before Sancho Panza got here. Okay? As long as uh, these 14 acres have been here, chipmunks have been falling over dead uh, for various reasons. Uh, the, 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 you, you know, it's, it, it, it's not like no chipmunk ever fell over dead at Bugs in a Jar Farm until, until the last year or two, okay? But that is exactly what that video with those, uh, I don't know if they're conspiracy wackos or not. You were, the purpose of the video was to lead you to believe that, it, that number one, that more chipmunks were dying uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the past two years than were dying before. That's the first takeaway. And I don't know if that's true or all. Then, of course, what they that of course what they really were doing is the reason for it is because Sancho Panza got here.
obviously there is no other reason. So I don't know. I, I, I mean, it sounds logical that if the incidence of sudden chipmunk death syndrome really has skyrocketed, okay, since Sancho Panza got here, I'm going to be a little more likely to uh, believe that Sancho Panza is the reason for sudden chipmunk death syndrome. <coughs> Anyway, so hopefully I will not get this video ripped down, and I hope I, I, I've not offended uh, my buddy. I, I mean, it's, it's an interesting, uh, it is an interesting point, and I would like to see the research. I would like to see how many chipmunks have died at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the last two years and compare it to any other two-year period. In history all right and uh, even then that doesn't prove causation but it certainly is some damn good circumstantial evidence that circumstances don't prove causation but anyway just before I wrap this up since I realize I'm talking to myself but actually I'm I'm talking to she knows who I'm talking to so anyway in this video that my other friend sent me and this is about source credibility. So, anyway, this loud mouth guy sounding kind of like me, uh, I guess he lives down in Florida. This, this little limp dick lefty uh, down there in Florida was ragging on and on about, uh, uh, about uh, Governor Ron DeSantis and all of that basically, you know, insinuating that uh, he was as evil as, as Hitler. I'm not going to get into it. You can find, uh, the, you, you probably know what the latest thing uh, there is going on in Florida. But anyway, so the video, in the middle of the video, just out of nowhere, the, the, this guy, as he's spouting all of this little limp dick lefty, uh, lefty stuff, and just a hint, it was, it, he does, he is one of these people who do not understand the difference between of and with, if that gives you any sort of a, uh, a, a hint what we were talking about. The man is too stupid to understand the difference between the of and with. I know those are two difficult words to understand the difference. But anyway, in the middle of his spouting his ignorance, not knowing the difference between of and with, he mentioned out of nowhere that Florida, the state of Florida, had the highest cost of living of any state in the country. Flat out came right out of his mouth that he was spouting an absolute fact. Anybody listening to him walked away from that video uh, without checking his facts, thinking that Florida uh, had the, the highest uh, cost of living uh, of any state in the union. Unadulterated fucking horseshit. I knew it when it came out of his mouth. Complete unadulterated horseshit. I just spent six months in fucking Florida. A hell of a lot cheaper than here in New York. I knew goddamn well that Florida. Uh, you know, he was, he was trying to tell me fucking Florida uh, it, it, it is more expensive uh, than, well, hell, than, than New York, than California, than fucking Hawaii. Have you ever gone over to fucking Hawaii? Uh, and I'm hearing people, you know, going up there to Alaska, uh, you know, uh, hell, Vermont. Uh, so anyway, it took me uh, about two minutes of, of basic research. Uh, is does Florida have the highest uh, standard of uh, uh, the highest cost of living? The answer no. So top ten. You know, who are the the top ten most expensive states? Uh, nowhere on the list. Florida is nowhere on the list. 
finally I said, okay, I Googled Florida's ranking in the cost of living uh, index. It actually comes in at number 15, and I'm a little suspicious of that. Obviously, Hawaii uh, far and away the most expensive of the 50, I mean, for obvious reasons. That, uh, but Hawaii, Alaska, for the same reasons, California, New York, uh, and 10 others uh, cost more to live there than Florida. But what I'm saying is, I, I just get so fucking sick and tired uh, of this fucking bullshit. Uh, the people getting on there spouting out fucking bullshit. And I'm not just talking opinions, I, I'm just talking easily verifiable facts. And so, th- 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 this clueless fucking moron uh, spouting this unadulterated horseshit that Florida w- was more ex- had a higher cost of living than Hawaii, why would you believe anything else out of the fucking moron's mouth? You know, if, if he, if the, the, the fucker lives in Florida, and uh, and, and and doesn't fucking get it uh, that he lives in the fifteenth, uh, anyway, uh, probably because the price of his adult diapers have uh, have doubled. With all the shit pouring out all of his all of his holes. Anyway, I gotta wrap it up. Because this little dog needs to eat. And uh I don't know if he needs to eat a chipmunk or not. Sounds like the froggies are cranking up and the lightning bugs. It is a fine spring evening to be a lightning bug in a jar. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Just remember, monkeypox is not a gay male disease. It is not. You are susceptible. Fucking bullshit. I just get so fucking sick of bullshit. You get sick of bullshit. I get sick of this fucking rant. Give me some goddamn food. Bye, guys. Man, night falls, bugs in a jar. We have two or three kinds of frogs screaming out there. Bye, guys.